Hello Grafanatics! Do you have crazy ideas or a wild business need that uh, Grafana's visualizations can't display? Then you're in the right place! Today we are going to be driving into Grafana's canvas panel, Grafana's most flexible visualization. So let's get started on this creative journey together. Grafana's Canvas visualization is a powerful and flexible tool that allows you to create custom visualizations. From drawing basic shapes and adding text, to binding data to interactive elements and importing animated images, the possibilities are endless. And in this video, we will talk through the process of setting up Canvas panels and discuss the data needs, explore various customization options, and by the end, you'll have the know-how to craft stunning and highly functional Canvas visualizations. We will start by using Grafana Play for this demonstration, but the steps will be the same on your local Grafana instance. To access Grafana Play, click the link in the corner. Grafana Play's home screen is a dashboard. Follow these steps to add a new panel. Next, select Canvas from the list of panel types. Now we have our blank canvas with one metric field element ready to begin our creative endeavor. But before we start playing with the elements, let's check the main panel options, where you can quickly modify the title, description, transparency, and other settings. Well, for now, let's name our panel My First Canvas Panel. Great! Now let's move on to discuss the data that we will need. The Canvas panel can display all sorts of data. For this demo, we will use the test data data source to illustrate how to integrate data with our Canvas elements. For more information on the test data data source, link in the corner. Now, the Canvas visualization has lots of data freedom. The only thing I recommend is to provide data sets with a single row, or to be mindful that with multiple rows of data, the panel will pull by default the last row. Let's add some data to show you this situation. The data that we will use is provided in a CSV format in the video description. Now let's change the test data data source to CSV content, and we will add the multi-row column set. Now, double-clicking on the metric element and selecting a field, it displays the last one. Again, be mindful that by default, everything in the canvas will pull the last row of data. So why don't we use now the single row dataset? And now that we have it, we can go over all the crazy things that you can do with the Canvas panel. Canvas panels are super special and different from other panels because with them, you can interact a lot with the elements inside. As you saw earlier, you can click and double-click on some elements. You can right-click on them, you can drag them, select and resize them, and if you hover over them, you will see little crosses that will let you pull arrows out of them. Ah, and you can also right-click on an empty space where you will be able to add elements or set the background. So, well, why don't we do that? Right-click on the background and click on Set Background. Here, you can pick images that Grafana comes with, like this one. It doesn't look awesome, but uh, we will fix it in a moment. You can also choose the URL section to provide any image you like, which can also be an animated image. Let's put the URL to this quiet ocean animated image that I like a lot and will make it easier while we navigate through the settings. The Canvas settings are just a few toggles. The first one is inline editing. You can activate and deactivate the awesome mouse controls I showed you earlier. This is important to have it turned off if you don't want your users to play with the panel, as anyone could still move things around. But you won't be able to use mouse movements even in edit mode. So let's turn it on while we are editing in this tutorial. The next toggle is the experimental element types, like buttons, wind turbines, and other crazy things that we will see in a few. But if it is turned off, they won't be available, so why don't we keep them on? Last, like in Google Maps, you can enable pan and zoom with mouse controls detailed here below. 
If it is enabled as well, you can turn on infinite panning if you may get too many elements inside. Just be careful as, again, all this is experimental. And because of that, I won't go crazy, so let's turn that one off and move on. Now inside of the layer, before we check all the layer section, let's check the options at the bottom, background and border. Background is similar to what we saw in the pop-up window setting in the background image. If we remove the image, we can set a fixed color or pull a color from the data. Next, we have the image options that I showed you earlier, but here you can also pull it from a data field. But let's pick a fixed one, these pipes. And below is where you will be able to modify the image appearance to be original, contained, cover all, fill all, or tile it. I like fill all and why don't we return to my calm water. Lastly, there is a border option for the visualization. Straightforward, you can set the width and the radius of the rounded corners. If you have a border, you can choose a fixed or fielded color. Let's keep no borders and let's move to the actual elements, probably what you've been looking for this whole time. Now, there are two ways to add elements to the panel. Right-clicking, as we saw earlier, or clicking Add Item on the Element section. In this section, you can delete, duplicate, or rename elements, clicking on the name, or on the pages, or on the trash icons. You can also rearrange them if one needs to be in front of the other. Last, whenever you select an element, either from the panel or of the Options section, a new section will appear below with specific settings to the element type selected. Now in this section, every element has the same layout section to align the elements vertically and horizontally. You can also set border constraints, resize, reposition and rotate. And, well, you can also change all that with the mouse. Another common option to all elements are data links at the bottom. For more information on them, link in the corner. But now that we cleared up all the elements and their common settings, let's move on to the main ones. Now, there's a set of basic shape elements. We have the ellipse, we have the rectangle, triangle, a cloud, and a parallelogram. They are useful for when you want to create flow diagrams. All of them have a text setting, with a fixed text option or a data field and you can set fixed text colors or from a field. You can do vertical and horizontal alignment and change the size. And below the layout, again, common to all elements, we have the background of the shape where you can set a fixed color or from a field or an image. And below you can modify the borders width, change the color and the roundness if it's a rectangle. Now, let's move on to another common element type. The metric element allows you to display real-time data values. It may look like a rectangle, but the behavior can change based on the values. Double-clicking brings a field drop-down whose values change colors based on the thresholds. For more on the thresholds, link in the corner. In the metric settings, we have the text section again, fixed and filled options. Beware, if you set it as field here, the color won't change with the thresholds as when you did it with a double click. Now below you can also change the color, the alignment inside of the box and the size. And under that we have all the standard stuff that we talked earlier. Now moving on to the text type, it is similar to the metric, but when you double click it, you can set a fixed text and it has a transparent background. Now in the settings, you can change the text settings, the layout, background color, and border, well, as usual. Just beware again, the background color is transparent by default. The next element is the icon, which lets you add an SVG icon image that you can colorize. Clicking on the fixed SVG path, the icon options allows us to choose folders and even URLs where you can link to an SVG image. But in the Unicorns folder, you can choose from a vast variety or select from a field. Well, let's select uh, this Android icon. 
Now, below in the settings you can choose a fixed color or from a field. And under these ones, well, again the standard settings. The next element is the server. It is useful to represent data centers or specific servers in your visualization. And the first setting is the type of server, which can be a single server, a stacked one, database, or a terminal. Then there's an option for a status color. Now, switching through the different server types, you may notice that they have tiny circles representing lights or bulbs. And a cool thing is that we can colorize those. And not only that, you can also make them blink. Well, let's check this. Configure the rate in Hertz, either fixed or from a field. Well, I like one Hertz, one per second. <laughs> cool, it is really pretty, right? Like a Christmas tree. Now let's move on to the experimental elements that we talked about in the canvas options. They are the button and a few crazy others like the wind turbines and the drones. But first the buttons. They can trigger and interact externally from the canvas panel. On their settings, we can change the variant from primary, secondary, success, and destructive. If you ask me, they are just changing of colors. But next, we have the standard text things inside of the button, similar like source, text, color, alignment, and size. But below is the interesting part. Clicking a button can call APIs. So to do so, we can define the endpoint, the type of call from GET, POST, or PUSH. And with GET, we can set query and header parameters. But if we select POST or PUSH, we can also set the content type being JSON, text, JavaScript, HTML, XML, or URL encoded. And then we can add any needed payload. This is super powerful, as your panel now can be interactive. Now, onto the quirky elements. We have turbines and drones. With the turbines, you can configure the speed of the blades in revolutions per minute, RPMs. If we check the drones, we have three types, or three views. Uh, the top, the front, and the side. With the top view, you can set the speed of each one of the four rotors, and also configure its pitch. But with the front and side views of the drone, you can only control the pitch since the rotors look weird from the side, right? Now moving on to another important element are connectors. They are not in the plus sign or right clicks that we saw. To add a connector, hover over an unselected element to see little X's around it. Hovering over those X's, you can drag an arrow from it and pull it to another element to leave it floating. That creates a connector. Now, connected elements can be moved and they will stay connected. Cool, right? Now, selecting a collector also brings useful settings. You will see little dots that appear uh, where you can twist the connectors. Let's make this one S-shaped. Now selected on the panel settings, we can change the color, the size of the line and the arrow and the radius, which uh, smooths the twists. All of those can also come from data fields. You can also control the arrow to appear forward, reverse, both ways, or to have no arrows. Then you can change the line style to be dashed or dot, not only complete, not only full. But the coolest thing, if you have the dash or dotted the lines, you can also animate them. <laughs> so many things that you can add and do with the canvas panel, right? Okay, let's uh, save it and add it to your dashboard to create all sorts of crazy things. Seriously, the canvas is the first of many steps and crazy ideas that you may have. To learn about some of those, check the videos on the screen. And with that, you are now ready to create stunning interactive dashboards that go beyond traditional visualizations. Happy dashboarding and have a good one!